I realize now that I probably should have done this video before I use the tiller, so apologize. It looks a little dirty. <laughs> but because of that, I can give you this tip of the day. I was out there using the quick hitch on the tiller this weekend and uh, worked great, okay? Um, problem was though is that this bolt right here, I didn't have this nut tightened down and it just it actually rattled loose right as I turned around to see it just falling out and disappearing somewhere underneath the tiller <laughs> and getting tilled up. Now believe it or not, nothing happened. This bottom bolt was still snug right through here and the bottom of this top hook kind of just pressed against the quick hitch frame here. And so everything just kind of continued on. I finished tilling, I finished planting. It worked out great, but I thought it was a little bit amusing. You know, you just gotta check that stuff from time to time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'm gonna have a field test of this tiller coming up really soon. You'll wanna check it out. Let's go ahead and talk about the Rhino Rebel Series tillers here, okay? Or rototillers, or rotary tillers, or rotivators, or soil conditioners. I had a chance to use it for the first time this weekend, was thoroughly impressed. I got a video coming out, so make sure you watch that as well. Let's go through the features, the characteristics here, give you a good idea what this attachment here is all about. Let's go over the obvious stuff here first, the things you can see right now. Okay, so this is in green. You can get this in uh, a lot of different colors. The green color, orange, uh, Kubota orange, or rhino orange. You can get it in blue, you can get it in red. And some of their products, I'm not sure if this one in particular, you can get in black as well. You're also gonna see that it's quick hitch compatible. This is the Spiegel quick hitch that I sell, does not require bushings, okay? So you save a lot of money that way. Get these from Good Works tractors as well. You can see right here it says made in the USA with US and imported parts, okay? These gearboxes, I know it'll say on here, uh, yeah, made in China as most gearboxes are, but you can see there's a mixture there with a lot of the work being done here stateside. One of the features I really like about these tillers is the fact that they're gear driven. You're going to see either a chain driven or a gear driven option out there. Some folks are going to prefer chain driven because if you bust a chain, it's fairly easy to go get a replacement chain and get back up and running. Gears may be a little bit more complex or more specific, but I just feel like it's a little bit more robust, a little bit more reliable. So I've never had to replace a gear or had a gear issue on a tiller of any kind in my life period. So maybe it's just kind of that history uh, of reliability that I've had with this system that kind of leads me towards the gear drive. So one of the features tucked way up inside here is gonna be a slip clutch, okay? That is standard on these tillers. I know it's hard to see. Try to get in there a little bit closer so you can maybe see the slip plate, but it doesn't really matter too much. Just know it's there. It's not gonna be a shear bolt. So I think a feature like a slip clutch is very important to have on a tiller specifically. You know, maybe a brush hog can get away with a shear bolt, but a tiller is constantly making contact. You know, it's engaging the ground, and so you never know what's buried underneath the surface, whether it's a stump or a, a stone or a, a root or whatever the case might be. So slip clutch here is gonna help you just keep in action, keep going. It's just gonna momentarily stop until you move on beyond that point there and then just keep on tilling. So now into some more subtle features that you might not really notice or pay attention to, but if you pay attention to this end plate right here, this flat plate that's on this end, you're gonna have one on the other end as well. This is a half inch thick, okay? So I also sell some other manufacturers of, of tillers. Uh, one of the other ones that I really like actually is a Tar River tiller. Um, they do come out of China and uh, they're a little bit cheaper as well. Actually, they're quite a bit cheaper than this Rhino tiller here, but this tiller weighs about 100 pounds more than the comparable um, medium duty Tar River tiller. And so where that extra weight comes from are areas like this. This very heavy duty, thick, um, really almost overbuilt, which is a good thing, end plate here. But other areas of the tiller as well that are going to have just thicker gauge steel or more material, even up in the hitch area here too, that just kind of account and give you that uh, general feel of real robustness with this tiller. You are, of course, going to have an adjustable back plate here where you can keep it up in a very high position and let all the debris and everything else kick out on the back side here. Or you can taper that all the way down and let it just kind of hang low, really as low as you want. Another one of the very well-built and beefy parts of this tiller assembly right here are going to be the entire hitch area. You're going to see a continuous weld that comes all the way along here. And you can see this very, very heavy duty uh, hitch plate here tying into the whole system for the three point hitch. A lot of support right through here. It's going to be one of the more robust systems that I've seen on a tiller in this size range. If we take a look here under the bottom side, you're going to see six hardened L shape 
a blades per flange here. Now these blades you're gonna notice as you go across. If you take a look right here at this point, you're gonna see it doesn't go straight across here. It kind of tapers down as you go from rotor section to rotor section, all the way down. And so the benefit of what that is, is it's an offset flange then, okay? So it puts less strain on the tractor itself, on the hydro, or on the uh, the engine system there, the PTO system, the drive line, as not every tine is making contact with the ground at the same time, okay? So imagine if you had all of these tines in a row making contact at the exact same time, it's gonna put a lot more, require a lot more effort on the machine to make it spin around and keep churning everything up. So with these being offsets just slightly like they are, it's just one making contact and the next and the next and the next and so on, okay? So it just breaks that load up a little bit and makes it a lot easier. These tines are replaceable if needed. You can see they're all bolted on here. And as you can tell, I had quite a bit of fun this weekend. A couple final things to note. This is gonna be a cast iron gearbox that's on here. And also, these can come in a forward rotation or a reverse rotation. So I have such good performance out of a forward rotation tiller that I've never even bothered to try out a reverse rotation tiller. I've heard rave reviews, I'm sure I'll try it at some point. If you have experience with them, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you'd like to order one of these tillers, you can either pick it up here at Good Works Tractors in Kalamazoo, or we can ship it to you as well. So just get a hold of me. We can configure it the way you want, the size you want, the width that you want, the color, all that kind of good stuff. We'll figure it out for you. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to stop by. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description as well, okay? I can help you out with an attachment like this. I can help you out with an accessory, with a tractor, all sorts of good stuff. There's also other links down there for accessories and attachments that you can get 5% off with discount code GWT. Check out the other videos on my channel, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.